Okay, part four. Let's uh, get started here. Got the Iron Man helmet. I'm going to be smoothing it out today with a little bit of Bondo, getting the first coat on. Uh, I'll be using Bondo glass today, uh, which is right here. This differs a little bit from regular Bondo in the fact that it has fiberglass strands mixed in with it. Uh, I would not recommend using this Bondo glass if this is your first time using any kind of Bondo. Uh, just because this is a little bit harder to work with, it is really stringy uh, due to the fiberglass in it. But for this first coat on the Iron Man helmet, I don't mind using this. I already had it. Whenever I do the second and third coats, I'll just switch back to regular Bondo. Uh, but why not use this? I got a uh, little uh, mixing pallet here that I just made out of a piece of scrap steel I had laying around. Stick my thumb through there and uh, mix it up pretty good on here and uh, get it spread out. Have a respirator here. I won't be using this in the video. Okay, I'm outside right now. And I actually have a fan blowing on the work surface as well. Uh, but if you're inside or in a garage, you should definitely use one of these. And when you're doing your resin, uh, the step before this, you definitely want to use this because that resin is even stronger than Bondo. Uh, if I put this on now, you wouldn't be able to hear me talking. So if you don't have one, you should try and get one. At least do this outside in a well ventilated area. Uh, I got some different. Uh, Bondo applicators here. There's one that I just cut in half, make it a little bit more easy to work with. Here's a really small sliver I cut off the end for doing all the really tight areas. I have a little bit of a harder plastic scraper here and or just a simple razor blade. I'll be using that. I'll show you what that's for in a minute. Uh, so we're just gonna try and get some Bondo on here and start getting it smoothed out. Uh, before I started, I did give the entire helmet a light sanding with some 150 grit paper, uh, just to uh, just to take the gloss off of that resin and give the bondo something to adhere to a little bit better. Uh, it's gonna stick a lot better if you scuff it up a bit. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to sand down to the paper. Just rough it up a bit. Uh, so I'm gonna start mixing this up. I'll show you what I have done on the helmet actually first. Uh, everywhere that's green, obviously, where I started putting some Bondo. Uh, some of these really low areas I just hit really quick, you know, just to build them up before I put my very first uh, overall coat on the entire helmet. Got some on the uh, ear pieces here, around back. I got most of the back pretty well done. I started with this middle section. I uh, let that harden and I gave it a little bit of a sanding just to sort of get it roughly uh, into shape. And then I did the top and the bottom. Uh, I'm not going to do this all in one go and you shouldn't either. Uh, don't try and put Bondo all over this entire thing at once uh, because you're going to lose your detail lines. You're going to lose exactly where your corners are and it's going to be really hard to uh, to figure out where you need to sand and where all those edges and corners are. So I'm sort of working in like a checkerboard pattern. Think about a checkerboard. Uh, I do either all the black parts or all the red parts first and once that was dry I would go back and uh, hit all the areas that I missed. So uh, for example, if I did this section here above the ear, I would not do the section right next to it. I would skip forward to probably the face piece. And once those two sections were dry and I had them roughly sanded, I would go back and fill in the middle piece. And I would leave the detail lines in until the very end. Okay? That way you'll keep track of all your edges. You'll know where to sand. I did that down here on the jaw started here, then I filled in this little section at the bottom, then I filled it in the middle where it needed it. Uh, you, your project can really get out of hand if you just start smearing Bondo all over this whole thing. 
So I'm going to get a little bit mixed up. I think I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, work on this back section. I'm probably going to work from here back to the back and all the way out to the sides. I'll stop along this line. Uh, I'll stop at the front here. I'll stop at my detail lines. And I'll stop at the detail line back here. Okay, I'm not putting Bondo right up against this right here that I already have done. I'll stop on this end of the detail line. So I'm going to get a little bit mixed up. You don't want to mix up a lot of this stuff. This sets really fast. Um, outside it's about 75, 80 degrees out. So I'm only going to mix up what I can use in about three minutes because that's just about the working time for this stuff. Uh, after that it's going to harden up too much. You're not going to be able to do anything with it. So I'm just going to sort of estimate how much I need to use. It's better to mix up a little less and run out of it than it is to uh, mix up a whole bunch and waste it. Okay, I'm just going to give this a quick little stir first. And you can see this is how stringy this stuff is. That's all the fiberglass in it. That's why I wouldn't recommend using this you've never used Bondo. Get a feel for the regular stuff first. And uh, there's really no need to use this anyways. Uh, it is stronger than regular Bondo. But uh, for what we're working on here, we don't need something super strong. So I'm just going to get about that amount. Maybe uh, a little bit more than a golf ball size. Actually, I'll put a little bit back. I'll keep it to about a golf ball size for this back section. Okay. Get one of my spreaders here ready. Get the hardener that fell on the floor cream hardener. I'm going to add about a pea-sized amount. Okay, See that? That's plenty of hardener. If you add more, especially on a hot day, it's really going to dry up quick and harden up on you. Now one thing I want to mention, I see a lot of people mixing up Bondo the wrong way. Uh, maybe you're thinking, how is there a wrong way to mix something up? Well, Bondo gets air bubbles in it, okay? You don't want air bubbles in it, or you want to minimize the amount of air bubbles that are in it. Uh, because whenever you put this on, there are air bubbles in it. When you go to sand it, uh, all those air bubbles show up on your piece as craters and little pinholes. I see a lot of people just put their Bondo down like this and just start stirring it around with, uh, you know, whatever they have. Use your spreader. And the way you want to do this is you want to sort of fold it and smear it. Okay? I'm not stirring like this, putting a bunch of air in it. Okay, I'm going to grab it. I'm going to fold it over that uh, hardener. And I'm going to start smearing it. Okay, I'm going to put it down so it's a little easier to work with. Smearing it. Stirring in circles, just putting air in it. This also helps it mix better. You can see if there are any streaks in it. If there are any uh, streaks of red in there, you want to get that mixed in. Get it all one uniform color. Okay. Get it all in a pile. I'll take a uh, piece of metal here and I'll scrape off my applicator. Put that down and give it one more quick mix. You don't want to spend all day mixing this. It's going to harden on you. Okay. Spread that out.
All right, so that's pretty good. Clean up my spreader here just a little bit. So that's well mixed. That's all one uniform color. It's ready to go on. Okay, so I'm going to get the uh, back section started. Take my Bondo applicator. I'll just get a little bit on the back. Just a little bead. Move this out of the way. I'll try and get this a little bit closer. Start up here. Push down with a bit of pressure. Try and work that Bondo into all those small areas. We are going to probably be doing at least two coats on here. This will show you your low spots initially. And then on the next coat we can fill those low spots in. I'm not putting this on there super thick. You can actually see the, uh, the edges that are coming through. I'm just filling in the dense, the low spots, stopping on the edge here. That's as far as I'm going to take this. Stop at the detail line edge there. Try and get this as smooth as you can. Doesn't have to be perfect, but the smoother it is, the less sanding you're going to have to do. Just going to get this on here. Remember, the clock's ticking too, so don't work on one area too long. The bondo's going to harden up. Okay, I'm probably just going to shut my mouth here and get this done. You can just watch the process. Not putting it on thick, just getting the surface covered. That's the amount of Bondo I have left, okay? See that? We used it all. We didn't waste any. If you run out, you need more, mix a little bit more. Bondo glass is not, now well, maybe close to double the money of regular Bondo. So I certainly don't want to waste it. Let's clean up my edges there a little bit. dragged over the front. I don't know if it's showing up on camera how stringy this stuff is. And uh, you can feel it starting to harden up. Let me get the excess off of my scraper here. Just have a little bit left to do. Down at the bottom here. Start at my line and I'll bring it up so I don't fill in that line. over here just trying to get it nice smooth I've watched a lot of YouTube videos people doing this stuff and just caking this stuff on here literally putting it on like a half an inch thick and then I got to get out there, 60 grit sandpaper, and screw around all day trying to get it back down. All I'm doing is filling in the low spots. Okay, so that's just about there. Just going to even it out a little bit more. You'll know when it gets to the point you can't work it anymore because it won't stick, it'll just start rolling up on your applicator which is pretty much right about now okay I'm done I'll leave this sit for about 10 minutes and I'll come back and I'll trim off the excess let me give you a 
quick little shot of this. I know it's kind of dark here on the porch. Just an even coat. Again, I stopped at that line. I didn't fill that in. Okay, that way I know where my edge is. So we'll let this sit for about five or ten minutes. All right, before the camera cut off on me, what I was saying is that after about five or ten minutes of the Bondo setting, uh, it's kind of tacky. It gets sort of a pencil eraser consistency. It's like a you know a rubbery feel. Uh, this is the time where you want to grab just a simple razor blade and you can trim off the excess that way you don't have to sand it off later okay this, uh, this has been sitting for about probably six or seven minutes so I'm just going to uh, trim off all these strands that are hanging over it's easier to do this than to try and get in there with a little piece of sandpaper, especially these areas here, these lines. We'll just get in there, cut that right out, clean that up a little bit. Over here, you probably can't see, but I did smear a little bit into one of these undercut lines here. Just going to dig that out. Okay. Trim it up on this side. Just hold my blade against the uh, corresponding edge here. And I'll follow that line and take off my excess. Now, see if I'd have done this top section and this side all at once, I wouldn't be able to run my blade across it and clean things up. Get back here on the back. Get the excess out of this line. That's just all the less sanding you have to do. And in tight little spots like this, it's kind of hard to get sandpaper in here. It's a lot easier to uh, just trim it with a blade while it's still soft and rubbery. It shouldn't take long for this stuff to fully cure. Probably an hour at the most. Like I said, it is pretty warm out today. It's probably 75 or 80 right now. You can go back and cut off any big clumps. Let me move that back a little bit. Cut off any clumps or really high spots that you have. With your blade cut off a little bit here at the top just clean things up a little bit, clean your lines up now once this is fully dry uh, we'll move on to the next section, probably this front piece or uh, maybe down here that's basically the process for the uh, small areas again just cut up a smaller strip of your Bondo spreader and uh, and use that. I'll use that in these eyes here to get in there. Just apply another light coat. Uh, before, Once I have this all done uh, with this first layer, I'll go ahead and sand that down and uh, I'll start with the next layer. It'll probably be regular Bondo like I said. I can get that smoother than this Bondo glass. But uh, it's rounding off pretty good already. Feels pretty even. And uh, hopefully, I'll get this done. Just take your time with it. Don't rush. Or you're just going to have to go back and fix mistakes. Take your time. Do a good job with it. If you're a little bit afraid of using Bondo and ruining this, test it out on something, you know, use a scrap piece. Just get a feel for things before you dive right into your project. This stuff's pretty forgiving though. I mean, if you screw something up, you add a bit too much, you can always sand it down. It's just more work. That's all. 
it's not going to ruin the project. Alright, so that's pretty much all my high spots. My lines cleared out. Let this set. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll do the maybe I'll do the top section here uh, for the video as well. I don't know. It's getting kind of long, but that's basically the process. Also, whenever it's at this stage, five or ten minutes after you applied it and it's rubbery, now's a good time to clean up your tools. It just comes right off. See how that's still pliable it's not fully cured that's when you want to get it off your tools get it off to your spreaders you don't need to throw this away and get another one or use the same one okay let's get that cleaned off enough it's good for the next time clean off my plate here not hard to do just takes a little bit of practice alright I think I'll end the video it's getting pretty long uh, I'll do the rest and I'll bring it back probably on the next installment here uh, the sanding and the, ne the next coats to go on this so hopefully next time next video this will be all covered We'll start the sanding and uh, we'll move on and we'll get this thing looking pretty decent, I think. If you have any questions, comments, obviously you can leave them below. I hope this video helped you guys out. It's probably kind of boring, not really exciting stuff, but. We'll bring it back on the next video. See you guys then. Later.